assist individuals and families in crisis before it's too late. You, Ms. Sandoval. Thank you very much. Good morning, Chairman Catania and Wells. As you know, my name is Judith Sandoval. I'm the Executive Director of Children's Law Center, and I'm a resident of the District of Columbia. I'm testifying today on behalf of the Children's Law Center, which is the largest nonprofit legal services organization in the district and the only such organization devoted to a full spectrum of children's legal services. Every year, we represent 1,200 low-income children and families focused on children who have been abused and neglected and children with special education and health care needs. I want to say that I am heartened by both Mr. Catania and Mr. Wells' opening comments and the concerns that you have raised about the bill. Like you, we wholeheartedly agree with the goal of the bill to improve the provision, administration, and management of government benefits and services to support families in crisis. Unfortunately, in our view, the bill does not accomplish its goal. To be frank, I believe that the bill as written would actually hurt children and not help them, and I would urge you not to vote this bill out of committee. There are many more critical and more helpful ways to accomplish the bill's goal of helping families in crisis. I would refer you to my written testimony for examples. But if you are inclined to pass some legislation that involves a shared database of information, my written testimony proposes – includes some proposed amendments to the current bill that I believe will reduce the harm to children. One of the bill's biggest problems is its lack of specificity and clarity. My colleagues and I have met with many advocates, with council staff, with Mr. Carter, and staff from several agencies, and every single person seems to have his or her own interpretation of the bill and what it will do and what it won't. I urge you not to rely on any one person's interpretation, but to amend the bill to rid it of the vagueness and inconsistency that we see in it. Otherwise, the bill leaves to the executive and to agency staff critical policy decisions which we believe ought to be in your hands. And all of this is clarified in more detail in my written testimony. Perhaps the one thing I do want to say in my oral testimony is that if the system can succeed in helping children and families, we believe it's essential that individuals be asked for their consent before their data becomes part of the joint database system. Many of the very people this bill attempts to help are already loathe to seek government services and are distrustful of government workers. Sensitive personal information shared without consent is likely to anger and alienate at-risk families, jeopardizing whatever fragile trust or relationship they have with service providers. Violation of this trust will lead families to disengage from the very services that can help them. For the same reason, it's also important that families be invited to opt into the program rather than be forced into it. The bill should require that families consent to the convening of an interagency team and be assured that if they do not consent of sharing their data or convening a meeting, that there are no negative consequences. A system that purports to be person-centered must empower individuals and give them choices, and we believe that is the very best way to protect children. Other amendments that should be made to avoid disengaging at-risk families and pushing them away from services are that only DHS case coordinators should be allowed to view the data, that the amount of information entered into the database must be limited, as I believe you are already heading toward, that an agency caseworker who already knows the family contact them and offer them assistance rather than an unknown DHS caseworker. I am sure we can all imagine if some stranger we didn't know called us and seemed to know details of our health and family situation, that it wouldn't engage us. And finally, that the risk factors be defined in a way that does not lead to over-identification and it doesn't sweep thousands of people into the new system. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. I look forward to more dialogue. Thank you very much. Mr. Angel. Chairman Catania, members of the Court, my name is Jeff Angel. I'm here on behalf of the Children's Law Center.